For 12 days, OpenAI cooked. It was an underwhelmingly slow cook for 11 days. Then, on day 12, OpenAI deep fried their company name ever not being an oxymoron and revealed their new closed language model. Their new language model, they're naming OpenAI 03 that we might be able to use in 2026 for the cost of one venti mocha frappuccino per prompt. When we finally do get OpenAI's 03 available to the public, it will be the lobotomized version of the model we saw in their demonstration and the model that their top investors will get access to. Do not be surprised when this new model comes out and it doesn't provide any use to AI researchers and developers trying to build our own AI models and software. As closed AI gets closer to AGI, closing off all research that is useful to open AI becomes higher priority, with Sam now getting equity from the AI company that conveniently rose to fame as a non-profit open AI research workshop. The public should really be questioning whether we want this guy to be the guy that controls the best invention that humans will create. So in response to this news, I trained my own chain of thought Llama 3.1 model to mimic the functionality of the O1 model's iterative thinking process before responding to our prompts. Before we get into the fine-tuning tutorial to demonstrate demonstrate the model I was able to train with a very small data set, you'll see Olama's Llama 3.1 8B model on the left. Then on the right, you have my assistant program we will create in this video that uses the chain of thoughts Llama model to generate thoughts that get added as context to the prompt where the same Llama 3.1 8B model responds with thought context. As you can see, with thought tokens added to our prompt, you can get the same small language model to respond correctly where without thought tokens, the model fails miserably every time. By training an 8B model to only generate thought tokens, and using an 8B general language model to respond with the thought tokens, just as with the O1 and O3 models, we can greatly improve the performance of a model without increasing the compute requirements to run our models locally. In this video, I will show you exactly how I trained this model from creating my own custom training dataset to running the Olama model locally on my laptop. This whole process of fine tuning a language model can be done for free in a Google Colab notebook and no prior programming or fine-tuning experience will be needed to follow along this video. To start the program, we can create a new folder for our code and model files named reasoning underscore agent. The first step of this process will be creating a custom dataset to teach the Llama model how to think instead of generate responses as an AI assistant. For this part of the tutorial, you're going to need a code editor. I'd recommend getting VS Code for anyone who doesn't already have a code editor installed as it is free and simple to install. In VS Code, open your reasoning underscore assistant folder. For this, we will need to create two Python files. We'll create one named system underscore msg dot pi. This will store the string with our instructions that will be attached to every conversation in the fine tuning. Create another Python file named training underscore data dot pi. In here we can import the system underscore msg file to this file. Then on line three we can create a list named data. In here we can create a parameter in our data set as a dictionary containing three key values. First, there is the instruction key with our system message as the value, and this line will be the same in every parameter that you add to this data set. Then we have the input value, which will be the example prompt for this parameter in the training data set. Finally, as the output key, we can add the expected output as a thought model to our prompt. In the data set, you'll see I have a total of five tasks. Each task is one entire recursive thought process until the model finally returns the token that I have shown to indicate no more thoughts are necessary. You'll notice after the first prompt with the first thought generated from the LLM, in all of the preceding prompts for that task, I add the thought to the next prompt. This allows our model to digest the prompt and current thoughts as context to generate our next thought output. Now you can manually type these thought outputs or you can use a larger language model to generate the thought tokens for your training data. I chose to go the second route of letting the larger language model generate my thoughts for my data set. My training data set and the chain of thoughts llama model files are in the pro tutorial added on December 22nd on my discord server for all AI Austin pro members. If you want to skip creating your data set and even skip the whole process and just run my reasoning model locally with Olama, consider becoming a pro member today.
All AI Austin pros get early access to step-by-step -step written tutorial versions of each of these video tutorials I make for YouTube. In those tutorials, I share all of my source code for the tutorials for anyone wanting to just copy and paste my code and not follow along the tutorial. And in this case, you gain access to my training dataset and the Olama model files for my personal Chain of Llamas model. To become an AI Austin Pro member today and unlock both of the Pro Discord channels on my server, click the Buy Me a Coffee link in this video's description. To create my synthetic training dataset created by an AI, I tested multiple flagship LLMs as shown with the flagged prompts to ChatGPT01 earlier. While OpenAI is the only company that will flag these type of prompts, the only useful flagship model for generating these outputs that I found was Gemini. And I'm not talking about the Gemini through the web app that everyone is interacting with the Google models on, but instead the developer console. The developer console for Gemini allows us to select the models that are not available in the web app meant for the general public. These models are also far less lobotomized than the Gemini site. Now, whenever you watch this video, there may be more models added to the Gemini console, so feel free to play around with the models available at the time of watching the video. Now, the goal here is getting the model to generate only a single thought as its response and nothing else. That is going to be what disqualified Claude from being used for my data set. That's because Claude continuously generated responses with much more than one single thought acting as an AI assistant. This is important when we realize that we are not training a model to generate an entire thought process as its response. The philosophy behind these reasoning models lies on recursively being able to reprocess the prompt with the previous thought tokens. Effectively, this allows the model to put all of its intelligence, albeit artificial, into focusing only on what an intelligent human's single next thought would be in a first principle reasoning thought process. For the tasks that you add to your training data set, I recommend coming up with varying task types. In my training data, I gave it tasks varying from thinking through creating a business, analyzing a large Python file, attempting to solve an unsolved AI research task, an algebra problem, and a written math problem. Making your training data set even more diverse with more tasks for examples can likely get your model to outperform version 1.0 of my chain of llamas model. Fine tuning is a delicate training process and your training data set is the biggest factor in how well your custom model is going to perform. So play around with variations of your data set and only add high quality logical thought responses to your training data set to test what allows you to train the best performing language model for yourself. We are not training a politically correct AI assistant to be the face of our company like Sam. So let your ideas flow here in the training data creation phase of this tutorial. After you have added all of the example inputs and outputs to your data set, we can start the fine tuning process. In the description of this video is the link to the Google Colab notebook I will be using for this video. This is a copy of the Unsloth Olama notebook with a few minor customizations to handle our data set and use the Llama 3.1 8B instruct model. Unsloth is the open source project that has developed a new method of fine tuning language models simply with half the memory usage of other fine tuning libraries. I will be showing this tutorial using the paid Colab Pro A100 series GPU, but using the Google Colab free T4 GPUs are perfectly capable of running this fine tuning notebook for anyone that doesn't want to pay to go through the process. That being said, the free tier GPUs are painfully slow. If you are using the free GPUs, I would do this process when you have a few hours to spare watching the process, because if you allow the notebook to go idle in the middle of the fine tuning, Google will delete the notebook session and all of its progress. In other words, if you do have $20 to spare this month, paying for Google Colab Pro will cut the process from over three hours to about 30 minutes if you use the A100 GPU. So while paying for the Pro Colab membership isn't necessary, it is going to save you a lot of time for this process. If you have the Colab paid GPUs, you'll want to change the runtime type to A100 before running any code blocks. Free users won't need to change any of these settings. On the first code block, we can click the play button to start installing the Python libraries in your notebook session. Now you should see a green check mark in the top right corner and the GPU for your notebook session. We can click this folder icon in the left panel to open the notebook's file directory. Then open the file finder app on your PC and drag in the two Python files into the notebook's main directory with your training data. 
This next code block will be the Python code to download the Llama 3.1 8B instruct model that we will be fine tuning. This block will take a few minutes to run. Next, we add the low rank adapters, aka LoRa adapters. When we fine tune with LoRa, we avoid making large scale changes to the main weights of the Llama model, which mitigates the high chance of breaking the language model and making it useless. Instead of modifying every weight in Meta's pre-trained language model, we can use the LoRa adapters to teach the model to learn new weights from our training data set. Think of this like taking the AI at its current education level and making it take a class on how to respond exactly how we want and not how Meta wanted it to respond as an AI assistant. Now we can run these parameters as is, though for those interested in the lower level intricacies of this process, the R and LoRa underscore alpha parameters are what sets the amount of layers in the language model weights we add to. Using 1616 is a very conservative number, and increasing these numbers to 32, 64, or even 128 will make the model train even more adaptations from your training data. Higher is not necessarily better, but increasing these numbers will allow for more adaptations to the language model in training. Just make sure you don't set the LoRa alpha parameter higher than the R parameter. The next code block is the Python code that will format our training data for the fine tuning process. Since we are training the instruct model for Olama, we need to train the model on multiple turns. By multiple turns, I mean example conversations with more than one input and output. The unsloth code here allows us to create those multiple turn conversations by randomly combining examples from our training data set. Think of this as making the model ready to respond on conversations that dramatically change topics in the middle of a conversation. Then the next code block will finalize preparation of our fine tuning data set for the training process. With language models, each company trains their model with specific chat templates. The chat template is a predefined format with code to tell the model what is the system message, the user message, and the assistant message. It basically allows the model to know where text starts or stops for each position in the chat. Since we are using the Llama 3.1 instruct model, we need to use Meta's specific chat template. If you are training another model, make sure you find the specific chat template for that model and set that within the code block instead of the Llama instruct format. Now we have a code block defining all of the settings parameters for our fine tuning process. The one setting that you may or may not want to change here is the max underscore steps parameter. What this parameter does is set the amount of steps in your fine tuning process. 60 is a rather conservative number and raising this number will allow your model to train more adaptations from the fine-tuning data set. If you find that performance using only 60 steps didn't successfully teach the model how you want it to respond, consider raising this number to allow it to train more adaptations. Run this to set the parameters and then the next code block will start the fine-tuning process. This will be where the model trains new parameters on your training data set, so expect it to take at least a few minutes to complete this process. As the model goes through each of the 60 steps, you'll see the training loss number should be dropping gradually. Training loss is a number that calculates how similar the outputs being generated in training are to the pattern of your outputs in the training data set. Depending on the diversity of your training data, this number can vary widely, but what you do want to see is over the course of the training, this number should be gradually decreasing. If it isn't, the model is failing to understand the pattern in your training data set. I don't recommend using this training loss number as something that you should be aiming for a specific training loss value. The only thing you should be worried about here is that the model is decreasing the training loss through the training. For larger, more diverse training data sets, you'll want to consider increasing the max training steps to allow the model to attempt to understand a more complex data set. After your model has finished training, run this code block to save the fine-tuned model within the notebook. And since we will be creating an Olama model from our quantized model, install Olama in the notebook. Now we can quantize our model with this code block. For those unfamiliar with what quantization is, think of quantizing like compressing a high-resolution photo down to a smaller size. You still see the same picture, but it takes up far less space and loads a lot faster on your computer. By quantizing our language model, it basically does the same thing, allowing the language model to use fewer bits per token while inferencing our models, reducing the memory usage during inference dramatically while sacrificing very little quality from the 16-bit version of your model. Expect this process to take a few minutes since the quantizing process is converting each of the 8 billion parameters in the language model to a 4-bit 
representation using a complex machine learning algorithm. After the quantization finishes, the next code block will connect to your Google Drive, and the one after will save all of the model files we need to create and run our Olama models locally. Once all of the files have been exported, you can download them from your drive to your PC. Now create a folder named Chain of Llamas within your Reasoning Assistant folder we created earlier. Drag all of your downloaded files into that Chain of Llamas folder. Now you will need to install a llama from their official site if you don't already have it installed. Then we can code our Python program to communicate with our new Chain of Llamas assistant. We can create a new file naming it agent.py. The only import we need for this Python program is olama. Then we can create a list named assistant convo that starts with just our formatted system message. Now define a function named main. Within the new main function, set the assistant combo as a global variable, so changes to the list during this function call take effect on assistant combo outside of our function. Then we can start a while true loop with the first line being a request for the prompt input to be typed. Now we need to create the custom olama model from our model files. In the chain of llamas folder, open the file named model file. This is the file that olama uses to define the settings for our language model. On the first line, we need to put the path to the actual ggUF model file. Copy the full file path to your quantized ggUF model file in the chain of llamas folder and paste that actual path to your model on line one of this file before saving it. Now copy the file path to the model file. Open a new terminal in VS Code, then type olama create chain of llamas dash f, then paste the path to your model file. Press enter to create your custom olama model locally. Next, you can run this command to install the generic chat tuned Olama 3.1 8B model if you have not already. Back in your agent.py file, we can define a new function to generate our thought tokens with the chain of llamas Olama model. This function should take prompt as input to limit the model's thoughts and avoid it going into a never-ending thought cycle in the case that the model doesn't generate a thinking complete token. I have written this code to limit the model to 10 thoughts. If you want to increase the maximum thoughts for your assistant, you can simply change the 10 to however many max thoughts you prefer your model to have. After the model has either generated 10 thoughts or the thinking complete token, this function will return all of the thought tokens as one text string. Back in the main function, we can print a message after the prompt is received to let us know that the thought tokens are being generated. Then in a new variable named thoughts, we can store the results from our above function. In a variable named thoughts prompt, we can format our prompt with the AI generated thought tokens for context. Now define a new function above the main function named stream underscore assistant underscore response. This code will simply stream the response from the chat tuned llama 3.1 model. Back down in our main function, we can append the thought prompt to the assistant combo list. And for the last line in the loop, call the stream assistant response function that will generate our streaming response from the chat tuned llama model with our thought tokens from the chain of llamas model for context. On the last line in the program, call the main function. Save the program, and now whenever you want to chat with your local reasoning model, you can run this command to start up the agent.py program. Once the program is running within your command line, you can simply type your prompts, press enter, and the program will print the thought tokens before streaming your reasoning assistance response. This has been AI Austin. I will see you in the next one.